The same way we're diligent about our jobs, the same way we're diligent about education and climbing corporate ladders and all those things, um, whether it's we pledge sororities or fraternities, we have to be that diligent about our relationship. Hey y'all, it's Dr. Stacey J. Johnson and you're watching BET's Love Me, Love Me Not for myself and a group of esteemed relationship panelists will answer your questions about relationships. Tonight, I'm so excited to have with me, hey, Tracy, hey, Marie, side <laughs> Hey, y'all. <laughs> and Rachel, how are you? I am wonderful, Stacey. So you all, let's get right into it, okay? So this first one tonight is keeping the spark. Ooh. So they say, I've been married for five years. We have two children. I love my partner, but the relationship feels stale. We haven't had a date in six months and I miss the feeling of being wanted. I have a coworker that flirts with me from time to time. Now I would never cheat, but I'd be lying if I said it doesn't feel nice to have someone notice me. How do I get the spark back into my marriage? Who wants to go first? I know y'all dying for this one. Who wants? Hey. Okay, so, um, just all, it's all over the place, number one. You know, first of all, congratulations for making it through five years. And five-year hurdle, that is big and major. But, you know, I understand that life happens, everybody's busy, you know, and, and we have to still reevaluate our relationship. That is something I tell a lot of my married couples. You want to reevaluate your relationship sometimes every week. You know, if you want to do it every night, whatever fits best for you every three months, every six months. Six months is a little bit too long, but you want to make sure that your partner is pleased because a lot of times we go in loving our partner the way we want to love our partner, but we miss out on how they want to be loved. So the fact that things are going on and they haven't said, hey, I need some time, hey, I need to know if I look good. And the fact they haven't said anything about looking good, there is no communication or reevaluation. They are just going with the flow, which commonly happens so easily, especially with kids and life being so busy. But one of the things to even stop anybody else from seeing you and them appreciating it, it goes back to what we've always been talking about, communication. There is a lack of communication within this marriage that if it isn't fixed, then that coworker will go from, you know, nice little word to nice little time. Woo. Mm. Yeah. Okay, for real. What you got to say, Tracy and Sheree? Always have to make sure that we don't let the day-to-day -day mundane things get us from doing those little spicy things. So whether that's how we go to bed, if it's sexy, whether that's putting hearts on the mirror with lips and saying, I love you, whether that's leaving little notes or when you leave for work, putting something special, a little special card in their lunchbox and just things like that. I love what Rachel talked about with that reevaluation. Every Sunday we sit down and we talk about not only our goals, things we're trying to accomplish, but what we love about each other, why we chose each other and how every day is better. And we also give space for talking about things where there's opportunities for improvement. And we do that on Sunday and we try not to do it any other time because because A, we gonna listen to church. <laughs> the spirit is right. <laughs> and, B, and B, and B, um, even if there was a challenge during the week, we've gotten less emotionally charged about that challenge. So we're able to have um, a more logical conversation, more compassionate conversation, and we usually come to that conversation apologizing. Hey, I probably overreacted, or I was a little stressed. So that reevaluation and checking back into that relationship is so important. And what I tell my women all the time, the women that I work with, is the same way we're diligent about our jobs, the same <laughs> way we're diligent about education and climbing corporate ladders and all those things, um, whether it's we pledge sororities or fraternities, we have to be that diligent about our relationship. I think, let me just add too, because, you know, Rachel talked about communication, which is important, but some of the exercises that me and my wife did when we first got to know each other was, Finding out each other's love language. 
and understanding what turns her on and what turns her off and what turns me on and what turns me on. Mm -hmm. And once I identify that and knew what she loved, I can always give it to her. So just recently, our home is under construction and um, we're just not there. The pandemic has delayed it. Well, I was hoping to be in there by December. Um, so what I did, I planned, I know she loves planning extravagant things. I'm not a planner. I planned a candlelight dinner in a, a home that's still under construction. Had a musician, a caterer, the whole nine because I understand what she loves and I speak to her language. I think that is so important. So as we begin this whole communication journey, it is so important. Five years, and trust me, I was married 33 years and then divorced. So I know about relationships. This right here, this communication, this knowing each other's language is what every relationship should thrive on. Well, there are three people, the only menage a trois I'm ever gonna be with when I talk to my clients is this one, okay? I, don't, I can do, y'all can do what you want with your lives out there. I'm just gonna, <laughs> it's only, this is three, is you, the your partner, and the relationship. And the relationship has to literally be 100%, just like you wanna bring 100% of yourself and 100%, your partner wants to bring 100% of themselves. The reason I wanna say that is because if you think it's stale for you, it's probably stale for them too. It ain't nobody. <laughs> I'm exactly. just saying, I can't be, but you ain't the only person in this relationship. So it might be that that communication that I think everyone has spoken about tonight, today, right? That you, baby, what you feeling? This is what I'm feeling. How you feel? And they might go, you know what? I was bored shitless. Like, what we gonna do? And it seems like this person helped me keep the spark has not even brought that up because they're thinking it's all about them. When really that third part of the relationship, your partner is probably thinking the same thing, but doesn't know how to bring it to you. So yes. you have to also say, ain't nothing wrong with liking a compliment from somebody. For some reason, they're making themselves think it's something wrong with being cute and being complimented. <laughs> Thank you for the compliment. I mean, what's wrong with that? Like. Yeah, anybody will show up and tell me I'm cute, I'm gonna say thank you, Mary or not. Thank you so much. <laughs> thank you. Okay. Absolutely. Absolutely. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. As a matter of fact, if somebody did think my husband was fine, I'd be like, what's wrong with you? <laughs> so. Thing is, somebody isn't saying something. Because I I'm like you, Stacey. Both of them are feeling the same exact way. Neither one of them are saying anything. And for your coworker to make a compliment and that compliment validates and shifts you to the point where you feel like, you know, you're having an emotional affair, you need to stop, deal with your self issues and communicate with your spouse. It doesn't mean tell them my spouse is talking to me and giving me compliments. And you aren't giving me compliments. It goes back to what Stacy and Sherry, what they do. They communicate and reevaluate their relationship at the top of the week when the spirit is still there on Sundays. You know, <laughs> say what they don't like in a good mood. If you say what you don't like in a bad mood, what is the first thing we do as women? We shut off sex. What is the first thing we do as men? We we stop communicating. So it becomes an issue over something we really needed to communicate on. So find that medium. By all means, talk. Yes. Now, I don't shut off sex. I, that's not me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to say. We're going to play a lot of games. We're going to play a lot of games. We're going to play that <laughs> The, the, the bar is open. Okay, no, let me stop. Um, I do want to point out something that um, this person did say. They said, let's give them some date night. I know that was a great date night experience that you set up for your wife, Tracy, but maybe let's tie into giving them some good date night suggestions just in case their creativity is not what yours is, Tracy, or mine or, or Rachel. So what what's something that we can help them do that is inexpensive because we don't know where, where the pocket might the pocket might look like. But what's something that we can help them create that could be something that this person could go to their partner and say, "Hey, let's do this." Well, listen, Dr. J. One of the things that we learned, and, and I think we all learned this during the pandemic, is that you can do a lot of cheap dates. Yes, we were doing Zoom dates and and and, co and comedy dates and, and all everything via Zoom, but also the park. The, the picnics, the, the lunches, the wine, Walks. we did all those things that are 
Inexpensive to drive. We have a convertible, so we would take the top down. And so even if you don't have a convertible, get in the car. You're drive. talking, you drive, you get to a destination. We have picnic baskets, sandwiches, cheese and crackers. It's not going somewhere that's important to them. It's time. You know, my husband and I, we find shows on Amazon Prime or on Netflix that we binge watch together. So we already have something to talk about. And the first thing we do is, you ready to watch the show? It's not, and our kids are teenagers in leaving the house. And it's not necessarily about us leaving the house because when you get to a certain age, you'd rather stay in anyways. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Without some communication that's missing. And it's about time. You know, you can put a, put a TV outside, watch TV outside. If he or she gives them time, that will satisfy everything. It's not about a dollar. It's about time. And that's what's not being given. What have, have we learned for help me keep the spark? So what about staying diligent about your relationship? Can we all agree that's important? Yes, absolutely. Yes. absolutely. Okay. I also, understanding each other's love language. What about Very that? important. Very yeah. important. And last but not least, and this will save the marriage overall, make time. What y'all think about that? Absolutely. Yes. It's so important. Yes. Excellent, excellent, excellent. All right, everybody, that is the end of this episode of BET's Love Me, Love Me Not. And remember, stay diligent, make time, and always love conquers all. Until next time, see y'all. Bye.